In this clip, we're going to be learning about the Motion Blur 3D and Vector Blur nodes. Okay, so I want to add some Motion Blur to my robot. And because we're adding him with a camera and a card, we don't have to just do some sort of forced uh, motion blur. In After Effects, you've got uh, a lot of plugins where you can do that, but you've also got the native motion blur. Now, Nuke, you kind of have an equivalent to that because of the way that the motion blur 3D node is set up, but you need the vector blur node to work with it. So let's go ahead and jump in here. This is, you know, we kind of go through the pipe here. We come out of our scanline render right there. Then we've got our roto and our pre-mult. Now we don't want the motion blur we're adding to be rotoed out uh, anywhere down here. So let's do it right after the pre-mult and before the merge. So I'm going to add a um, motion blur 3D. So type in motion and motion blur regular 2D and 3D comes up. We want the 2D one. And the two inputs here are the camera and then just the regular pipe. So if we drop this on, the regular pipe is going to hook up to the pre-mult. And then we'll take our cam pipe and plug it in right there where our cam is coming out. So what this does is it translates that cam information into UV data. So you can see up here, the output UV is taking that data and putting it into the motion channel. Now we don't really need to mess around with any of these things here, but you can if you want to. Basically, the more you increase this number, the distance from the camera, the less motion blur you would get. And the more you open up the shutter, the more motion blur you would get. But no matter what I change here, we're not going to see any blur because this isn't actually blurring anything. It's just taking that camera data and converting it into UV data for our motion channel. So this isn't actually controlling the blur, it's just controlling the um, thing that would make the blur happen. So we actually need to add the vector blur node. So come over here and hit tab and let's add vector blur. And that's going to be this one right here. And we'll just drop that in right after our motion blur. And then where it says channels all, we'll just change that to motion. And now there's a lot of different uh, options in here. Actually, I'm going to switch this back and change this one, the UV channels to motion, because that's the one that we're really doing here is our UV channels. Um, so. I'm going to kind of zoom in where I can see his hand. There's a lot of different things in here that you can play around with. If you want to learn, really dive deep into the vector blur node, again, hit the little help button and it's going to give you a really in-depth explanation of what every single one of these is. But for us, we can just go into the motion amount and start to change this slider. And that's where we're going to see our motion blur happening. Now, obviously this doesn't look correct because he's way more blurred than our girl. So just with kind of both of them in the frame, that's where I like to start to kind of play around with this. Now we don't see a big change until we start getting up here to about six to 10. Um, so I'm going to put this right at six. Now what will happen is on the moments where we get a lot more motion because the camera may have a moment where it's a little less fluid and maybe has a little bit of a jerk in it, then you're going to see a little more motion. So that'll happen over time as the camera moves more or less. Um, so this is going to be just a tiny bit of motion blur, but it makes a lot of difference. Now we can just take these two nodes and copy them. Actually, I'm not really technically copying and pasting, I'm cloning. So I just hit Alt K to do that. And what that does is it gives me the same exact settings, which is really nice if you did dive in really deep and start changing things, you know, with the fall off and the distance and all of that. If I change it in one place, it'll change in the other. So that way you have consistent settings all across the board. So I'm going to add that um, here as well. 
just right after the pre-mold we've got there. So you do your motion blur first and then you want to hook to your camera which in my case I'm going to add a little dot node just to make this a little bit more clean. And then your vector is going to go next. So we'll just take this and hook it in right there. We don't really need this dot node anymore. So we can just use that one for that. And then let's add a dot node right here. One thing I don't love about clones or linked uh, things like these is that it does kind of create some crazy lines that go across everything, but they're link lines. They're not actual pipe lines. So um, it's not as bad of practices. Sometimes there's just no way around it. Okay, so that is going to wrap up motion blur and vector blur. And you can see on the dog, we are getting a little more motion blur then we're getting on the robot. And part of the reason for that with the settings we have, you can see kind of the difference here, is because this is much larger. So pixels are going to go a lot uh, farther here than they would down here. Now the dog is moving around a lot on his own as well. He's doing kind of this little bark and that sort of thing. Now the problem is that, you know, we have these um, as clones. So if you say, you know, I don't want the dog to be blurred this much, I want to do this independently of the um, of the other node, then you would need to add your own. So I think we would be okay to keep the same the motion blur as a clone, um, but the vector blur, maybe we want to turn down that motion amount a little bit. So I can just delete that and then take this one and copy Control C, Control V, and paste. And now you can see there's no clone link. So I can just drop it right there. And then we can turn this down just a little bit. So now that motion amount is at a two instead of a six. So a little bit less prominent on the dog since it, it is much smaller. Okay, so that is about it for our motion blur and vector blur. Let's go ahead and move on to our next clip where we're going to be talking about degraining.